Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In today's video, we're going to take a, a quick look at the, uh, the Grandstream uh, SIP phone configuration. All this SIP configuration is going to be fairly similar across all phones. So I'll try not to focus too much on the, uh, the, the Grandstream specific configurations and more on the, uh, the SIP configuration. Okay, so to get started here, I've logged into one of our Grandstream phones. We're on the status page. It just basically shows IP address and the model and, and some other device uh, specific information. It does show that uh, none of our accounts are registered. And if you're not familiar with SIP, these accounts are the different lines on the phone. So account one is gonna be line one, account two is gonna be line two, uh, etc. cetera. Lines, and it's showing that they're not registered um, because we don't have a proxy or a back-to-back -back user agent in our testbed yet. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to uh, skip over. This is point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet, so you know, no one really cares about that. Uh, let me log back in. I'm going to kind of go down through these and, and just comment on the pieces that I think are important. And, and if you have any questions about any of this stuff, just just put it in the comments uh, under the video and I'll, I'll try to answer them. Or you can probably just Google this stuff easy enough. Okay, so um, uh, G723 and ILBCs are, uh, are both codecs. And I don't think I'm using either one of them, actually. <laughs> uh, silent suppression is something that you'll, you'll come up, you'll see every now and then in SIP phones, almost all of them uh, will do it. And, and what that is, is, and you've probably noticed it before, maybe on your cell phones, is, is if no one's talking, you'll all of a sudden hear nothing. Um, almost like the call has been disconnected. And that's, and what, what's going on is, is the, um, the SIP phone actually just stops sending RTP packets to save on bandwidth. And that's, uh, I mean, that's nice if you're struggling with some bandwidth, but, um, there's a, uh, another setting, which I don't believe the Grandstream phones support, but that's a uh, comfort noise injection. And that's actually just the opposite. That's where when you're on the phone, it actually injects a white noise hiss, like a tss, to kind of, to, to let the callers know that, that, uh, the, the phone line is still connected. I mean, sound suppression is great if, you know, if you're working with a couple DS0 lines, you know, in a small office, but uh, otherwise just, it, it causes more problems than anything. So I, I never use it. So the layer three uh, QoS of, um, uh, with a diff serve or precedence value, this is actually, I, I believe a precedence value of 46, uh, that's express forwarding. And um, I think it's express for <laughs> express forwarding. Uh, but anyway, express forwarding just means that they want it low latency. They they don't want they 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 want it to get there as fast as they can. Uh, they'd rather drop it, drop a packet, than uh, than delay it and and introduce a bunch of jitter and delay into the phone call. Also, this is not for the signaling. This is for uh, the voice packets, not the signaling packets. The signaling, I don't know if it's. Well, we'll have to keep looking at it. It's been a while since I've went through one of these configs, but uh, the signaling should be in a, in uh, like a assured forwarding or, or something that, that we, we don't want to drop those packets. Those we don't care if we delay um, because it's not going to mess up the, the voice quality of our phone call, but we do want them to make it there, right? <laughs> so we'd, we'd rather have the packets make it there than be dropped. And uh, I, we'll see if that's, that configs in here somewhere else. Okay, so we're not doing any VLAN tagging. That's what these guys are. And um, that's a p-bit value, but we're not worried about that. Um, okay, it's a timeout. This is the phone stuff. Use pound as a dial key, yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be the local RTP port. And see, <laughs> it says default 5004 must be even. Now, a lot of people, um, 
in the business don't use numbers this low anymore. Usually they start around 10,000 nowadays. Um, and you can start at around 10,000. You can see it goes all the way up to 65,000. And, and that way it doesn't interfere with other protocols that use the lower numbers. All right, and you can see that this, uh, this one RTP port is also for all four of the accounts. So, um, and when we get to the accounts, you'll see. So the accounts are basically your signaling and this advanced setting in general um, is kind of like your media uh, settings, okay? All right. Uh, keep live interval. That's for uh, uh, sending re-invites or update messages or options for that matter. It's just, it just keeps the, uh, the phone alive or the SIP call alive. We're not using any uh, stun servers or, or NATs. Right now, let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're provisioning the uh, the phone through HTTP. Oops. Uh, some DHCP automatic upgrade. No, and I always un undo this because I don't want <laughs> I don't I don't want anything upgrading automatically and then having a customer call and say, "Hey, my phone's dead." Okay, um, there's some security stuff, phone book stuff, LDAP. Oh, okay, so this one's good. This is SIP specific. This is, uh, well, kind of SIP specific. It's, uh, it's a DTMF payload type. And that's the, uh, I went ahead and pulled up a Wireshark trace so we could kind of look at it as we're going along through here. And I'm going into the message body, which is the SDP, the Resist session description protocol and I, I saw all these codecs in here i was like oh okay well that's that's somewhat helpful here's the g726 we looked at the ilbc and um it's got this rtp map of 97 here's the mode equals 20 that you saw selected up there and um and i'll show you where you set all that stuff here in a minute but uh, one of the things, what I wanted to show you was this DTMF payload type, and that's right here in this uh, RTP map 101 telephony event. And uh, it's just saying it's 8,000 hertz, I believe that is. Uh, it's for your uh, DTMF digit. So instead of sending the, uh, the DTMF, which is like when you push a button on a phone, you hear the And instead of sending that over the the voice uh, path, right? This sends it kind of out of band in its own in, in its own packets, and uh, yeah, we can kind of look at that real quick. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, so I I pulled up a Wireshark event, a uh, Wireshark, and um, and did a, a quick phone call and hit the zero button a few times and. And um, I'm filtering on SIP or RTP event up here in Wireshark. If you want to look at some of these things yourself. And uh, you don't really need the SIP. You can just do the RTP event. So let's go in here and look at this real quick. And uh, you can see it's got, a, you know, version, padding, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, here's the payload type, telephony event 101. And if you Google these, this telephony event, there's you can use several different kinds. Um, uh, 101, 99, 9, I, I forget what they all are. You can Google it and check it out if you want. 101 is is by far the most common you'll ever see. Here's the event itself, and it's just saying its event ID is zero, <laughs> which is because I was hitting the zero button. So the volume is 16, and you see this event duration in <laughs> zero. And, and that's because uh, as you hold down the, the zero button, it just keeps sending these, these packets. So I'm just, if you look up here, I'm just kind of going down. And you can see the event duration down here getting longer and longer and longer until it gets to the end. And you can see right here, so it had one, two, three, four, five, events or zero events and then it had uh, three ending ones and you can see I did it several times so I don't remember how many times I did it but that looks about right 
And I don't think you can set the volume in here. I'll, we'll have to, we'll have to keep looking, but I, I, I think the volume is fixed as far as this, this volume level right here. I don't think you can set it in the grand stream. Okay, so uh, moving on. Uh, so you can give it some, uh, oh, let's see, syslog server, yeah, we don't care. This is a network time protocol server. We're just using the, the US pool server. This is distinctive ring tones for different call IDs. So here's a system ring tone. I think that's the default. And uh, here's some other. And and these these right here, if you're wondering, these are different. These these are your two frequencies. So frequency one is 440 hertz. Frequency two is 480. And this is some kind of cadence thing, right? And uh, so you can kind of look at these. Not very interesting stuff. Um, uh, this is all just turning on and off options, call waiting, um, disable call waiting tone, disable direct IP calls, disable conference. I'm not even sure what that is. <clears throat> I think this is a grand stream specific, I guess you can send DTMF using one of their programmable keys. Uh, this is do not disturb. I disable transfer, disable multicast. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Semi attended transfer. Use RFC 5589 or use refer. Huh. Yeah, we'll have to play with that one of these days. And uh, this is if you got a headset plugged into it. And, and there's ink, different languages. Okay, so that's about it there. Like I said, if, if I skip over something and you're curious about it, you know, just post a question. We'll, we'll take a look at it uh, in, in more detail. So yeah, this is the, the packet time. And uh, this, uh, this is in 20 milliseconds. And what's interesting about this is, <laughs> if you look at the spec, it's kind of like, well, it's just a suggestion, but I guarantee if you screw this up, and, uh, and some of the, the phones, you can actually set that. I, I thought, I thought that's what this was up here, this 20 or 30. Uh, but this this seems like it's just for that one codec. Basically for all the codecs, this is the packet time, how much how much it's it's gonna uh, encode 20 milliseconds of of uh of voice or audio and uh and stick it in a packet. Okay, and and both sides need to agree that <laughs> uh, what size that is, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of problems, let me tell you. Um, a 20 is, is default and, and really you shouldn't mess with it. I, I, I think I've seen other people mess around with it, try to get um, better performance out of their network, but yeah, you're just gonna run into some problems. Okay, so moving on, let's see here. Let's go over to account one and this will be our mainly our SIP settings. And I know I skipped over the basic settings. I, I don't think there's a lot in here. Uh, yeah, you can use a DHCP or statically configured IP addresses. Oh, here's what that MP, MPK stands for, the multi-purpose key, okay? <laughs> and uh, I think that's a grand stream thing. I, I don't know, let's see, daylight savings time, LCD backlight, um, disable in-call DTMF display, huh? Don't even know what that is. Yeah, there's nothing really interesting in there. So, okay, so account one. And uh, you see I have this account active set to no. And that's kind of a grand stream only thing. I But I do that so I don't get a bunch of SIP registration messages being sent out to uh, the server right here, which doesn't really exist. <laughs> okay, so uh, it will in the future actually, but it doesn't right now. So that'll be another video. Okay, and so a lot of these uh, settings like this um, SIP server, an outbound proxy, user ID, authentication ID, and, and password are the same in a lot of phone configs. And um, I think this account name, let's go look at this invite right here. So now we're into the SIP message header. Okay, so here's the phone name right here in this from header. So that's that's this guy right here, right? 
And so phone A, line one, right? And so this will be, the count two will be line two and count three will be line three, okay? And a lot of times these user IDs right here will be telephone numbers. And let's see if that's a message. Um, oh, no, it's not. Uh, since I'm doing a direct IP call, which is where I just plug in the IP address and not use, dialing a telephone number, it's not putting it in this, in this from message here or in the to message for that matter, right? So it should, there shouldn't be a telephone number in front of this, this SIP header right here, right? But there's not. And that's because I'm doing a direct IP calling. Otherwise, this would be like a telephone number. Or it could be the extension, uh, like 1001, and then when you dial it, it automatically uh, attaches a, you know, a, a 972-212 prefix on it, NPANXX, all right? Okay, so um, we're not using a DNS server. User ID is phone number. Oh yeah, so here, <laughs> that's exactly what I was just talking about. Uh, SIP registration, it's set to yes, but since I have the account disabled, it's it's not trying to register. And I, and I did that just so we it didn't clog up our Wireshark trace. All right, let's see, uh, unregister on reboot. I think a lot of phones actually have that setting. I I don't know what the, maybe someone can tell me what the purpose of it is. Um, regist register expiration, 60 minutes, local SIP port, 5060. Now these local SIP ports are, are important, uh, especially on a phone with multiple lines, okay? And the reason why is each line needs to have its own SIP signaling port. Otherwise, it, you're gonna confuse the phone. <laughs> so if we go to account two here, and if we go to account two, you'll see, so it's, it's port is 5062, account three is gonna be 5064, and account four is 5066, right? And uh, yeah, see so this is line four. So anyway, back to account one. And uh, so you need to make sure that all your lines have separate SIP signaling ports, all right? This is a registration failure retry wait time. Um, there's some timers. I don't remember what these are right off the top of my head. I'd have to Google them. They, you can Google some of this stuff. Sip's got a boatload of timers, and you just can't remember them all. You just kind of have to Google them or, or look at the spec whenever you need to find out what they are. Um, okay, so the transport, this is pretty important. Important. Uh, most people use uh, UDP. You can use, um, I'm sorry, most people use TCP. Uh, you can use UDP, but um, uh, there's been so many hackers will send bogus telephone calls to your SIP phones uh, using UDP that no one really uses it anymore unless you're unless you're behind a firewall or. But usually uh, for your SIP signaling, you use uh, TCP. Symmetric routing. Yeah, so this, this has to do with um, um, getting through uh, NATs, I believe, and uh, requiring that it use the same, the, the same port that it was originated on versus a, a NATed uh, port through a NAT server, okay? And I probably didn't describe that very good. You can go read the RFC and, uh, and check it out if you want. Uh, okay, so NAT traversal using a STUN server. I don't remember what STUN stands for, but uh, it basically, uh, when you send a, oh, this is a good example right here. So if you send an invite, and let's say it's going out to the public internet, well, the the, the IP address here is 192.168.1.44. That's, that's non-routable in the, in the public internet, right? And you can see that address is just littered all through this, this SIP header and even into the, uh, into the SDP, right? What these servers do, the stun server right here, is it, it actually, re you can um, replace your, your private IP address and your SIP message and your, and your, and your SDP with 
a, uh, a public IP address that you get from the stun server. All right. This isn't really used very much anymore. Uh, most uh, SIPware routers uh, can do this automatically for you. You just, it, you know, it, it knows the public side, it knows the private side, and it can automatically uh, do this. Uh, also, uh, session border controllers are very good at manipulating and hiding your, your actual network topology that could be, you know, sent out on the public internet. You might want no one to know that your private IP address is on the other side of your of your firewall, uh, just getting, you know, sprayed all over the internet. So uh, an, a session border controller can take a lot of this junk out of here or hide the IP addresses and, and change them with its own and <clears throat> its own public one and so it can hide it, right? Okay, um, uh, subscribe for message waiting. Uh, yes, uh, some, or I think maybe most uh, PBXs require you to subscribe for it. I, I don't know, it, it, you might be able to send an update. Uh, I'd have to look it up, I don't remember really. I always subscribe to it. Uh, subscribe for registration event. I'm not, I don't even know what that is. Publish for presence. Yeah, I think this is, you know, if uh, <laughs> when you're at work and you log in and and all of a sudden your boss gets a little pop-up that says, oh, you know, Mike's now at work. <laughs> or Mike's now online or or something like that. But that's my understanding of a present server. Uh, proxy required. Yeah, this proxy required, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that is. I've never used it, so <laughs> um, I'd have to Google it, and I'm probably not going to. Okay, uh, voicemail, user ID, that makes sense. This is in your PBX system. Uh, or if you have a voicemail server, it can um, log into that. And maybe that's what this thing's for. I, I don't really know, that's, that's interesting. Anyway, uh, oh, here's, oh, so, <laughs> so when I told you that all the, the media or audio <laughs> was going to, was going to be under these advanced settings up here, I was wrong. So here it is. Send DTMF either in audio or via RTP or in SIP info. And this RTP right here is the RTP events that we're using, the, the 101 events, right? And I think you can do it in both. And in audio actually has some benefit, especially if you're interfacing with a voicemail server, you know, you call up some big company and their voicemail answers and you try to hit a button and, and it doesn't recognize these RFC events or they're not getting translated the way it likes it. And so you might have to turn on this in audio right here, which basically just sends the DTMF tones down the same path the, um, the voice channel is going down. And, and no one uses this via SIP info, so don't ever use it. This uh, early dial, I, I think that's early media, uh, which would be like a 183. Let me uh, Google that real quick. So I, <laughs> I kind of looked this up real quick and um, I'm not familiar with this early dial. It's definitely not early media. It has something to do with, with um, I guess it can send invites out with only partial telephone numbers and, and the phone's supposed to get these 484 responses back until you dialed enough numbers, uh, make the, uh, the proxy or the back-to-back -back user agent happy. And I've never used this. I. I don't know of anyone that's ever used that, so there might be a use for it. I, <laughs> I wouldn't know what it was. Uh, maybe someone can uh, put a comment in and let us all know. Oh, okay, so this, this dial plan prefix right here, this is what I was telling you about the, um, this is the prefix string that is uh, added to uh, each dialed number, okay? So if this is, let's say your telephone number is is uh, 972.972212001, right? Well, I mean, that's a pretty big user ID, which is actually fairly common, by the way. So, uh, yeah, you don't have to, you can still leave it um, 1001, and you can put the 
972212. Uh, uh, in this box right here and it will and put it in the uh, the prefix string or I mean it will append it to this 1001 so you have a, a full uh, NPA and XX and station ID telephone number right so um, and I would test that but since we don't have a, a proxy or since I can't dial a telephone number to make a phone call we're not gonna see it in our invite we'll we'll, we'll play with that later Okay, okay. So this <laughs> this BLF call pickup pre uh, prefix um, is is kind of an interesting <laughs> uh, a little feature. So if you remember way back in the olden days when you had a a telephone PBX and you dialed a telephone number, you you hit a button, it lit up and everyone in the whole building could see that you were on the telephone, right? Because the same button on their phones lit up. And uh, that is the, uh, the busy lamp. Or, or it's, it's basically, it's just, you know, and so, oh, and by the way, so if you wanted to uh, get in on that call, you could just hit your button and, and start talking with everybody or listen in if you were, you know, wanted to spy on them. Uh, and that's kind of handy. You know, if you're in an office, you can say, yeah, pick up line three, will you? And so that's what that's what this does. It, it, and it looks like you, you can prefix it. It says this prefix is prepended when answering a call with a busy lamp field key. And uh, I, I have not set this up before. It would be interesting to play with. We might have to do that one of these days. Because this is actually a feature that people like. They Like I was saying, you know, you can... If you're in an office, instead of doing a call transfer to the person sitting in a, a cube next to you, you can just say, hey, pick up line three, will you? <laughs> and um, that makes it pretty easy. So this, uh, this delay call forward wait time, let's say you're, you're not really at your desk a lot, and so you're going to call forward all your calls to some other person. But you want the phone to ring, uh, you know, uh, for 20 seconds, let's say. <laughs> And just in case you're, you're sitting there at the phone or sitting at your desk and, and you can actually pick up the phone instead of it, uh, usually when you call forward, it just gives you the cursory one little ring and then away it goes. So this, this, this allows you to let it ring for 20 seconds before it forwards the call, right? Let's see, enable call features. Yes, that's for the star codes like star 69 for call return. And a bunch of other star codes. Um, you always want to have that enabled. This uh, session expiration is is uh, the keep alives, and we'll have to go over that. There's a uh, a whole spec on this, and this is basically the user can send them uh, the UC or the, the UAC or the UAS can initiate these and and set the uh, and set these timers up uh, depending on who initiates them. So if this guy initiates it, he's gonna set it for 180. And if someone else initiates it, he's not gonna let them initiate it any less uh, or less than 90 seconds. So that's the minimum he'll allow uh, keep alive timers or keep alive sent to him. And uh, this is more of the, the keep alive stuff. Uh, you can either, you can request for a timer, you can, force a timer you can so you got the caller requesting a timer the callee requesting a timer and you can kind of read these this is kind of nice it actually kind of explains it request for a timer and making outbound calls so it says you know uh here's here's my keep live timer please support it so the callee is the the person you're calling the caller is is the one that's originating or the that's the, the person that you're calling so this is the originator, this is the terminating side. And then we have the force timer, uh, use timer even when remote party does not support it. And um, I think what it does, it just sends an invite out or and gets back, you know, a 200 okay usually and just uses that to, um, to update its uh, keep alive or its timers. And it's got the, uh, the UAC. Uh, this is the client or the phone specifying it. Uh, this is the server specifying it. And then force invite. Oh, this is what I was talking about a second ago. 
You can uh, either use an invite or you can use an update. Updates are usually more common because they're easier to weed out. Um, when you're doing a, uh, a trace, but you can use an invite if, if the other side doesn't support um, updates, right? Okay, so this uh, Enable 100 um, REL, <laughs> it's a reliability, I think REL stands for reliability, and this is basically using, is for PRAC, and that's, and, uh, that's a provisional ACK. Yeah, that, that's a whole nother topic. Account ringtones. Um, this is so you can have your different SIP, phone, SIP lines have different ringtones. All right. Um, ring timeout. This is so if the phone, if it rings for 20 or 60 seconds, it's going to, you know, shoot it off to voicemail or somewhere else. Uh, the send anonymous uh, is basically just block your call, blocking your caller ID. And you can either use it in a privacy header, the, uh, the anonymous method that is. We might be able to actually capture that real quick. Let's try that. Oh yeah, so we have to do a yes right here, update. And you can also do that from the keyboard on the phone, right? Uh, I, I forget, there's a key sequence to uh, block your, or make an anonymous phone call. Let's give it a shot. Let me go place a phone call. All right, it looks like it worked. Let's see here, here's our invite. Let's, uh, we don't need the SDP for this. Oh yeah, so it actually put it in the from header as well. I thought it was gonna give us a privacy header. Anyway, so this is what it does. So, <laughs> so from anonymous, oh here it is, privacy ID. There's that header. Well, they snuck it in on, snuck it in right above that from there. Yeah, so, so this is, this usually tells the phone system, say, yeah, I, you know, don't send my call, or I, call ID information to the person I'm calling. And, you know, that sounds kind of that only a criminal would use, but actually a lot of people use it, especially like uh, public fi figures or, you know, you don't want to have people, you know, storing your phone number and uh, and sharing it with other people and, you know, your phone number will be blasted all over the internet, right? So, you know, so they'll use something like this to block block their phone numbers, right? Okay, so enough of that. Let's let's move on here. Only use the from header, and this is use from header and use the privacy header. All right, uh, <laughs> and here you go. So you got, and this is why you don't block your number all the time, because you have anonymous call rejection. So if you get a call, with something with the privacy header or, or the from header all, all blocked out with those anonymous <laughs> entries, then you can just automatically reject it, right? And uh, here's a feature, I, I don't know who uses this, but uh, this is if someone calls you, it'll automatically answer the phone. And, um, and several SIP phones I have seen have that. I, I don't know why anyone would want that, but... Um, I can't think of a scenario where you'd want the phone to answer uh, automatically. Okay, let's see, allow auto answer by call info. It sounds like it'd be like using a call ID, but I don't see anywhere to put a call ID in there. So I'm not sure what that is. And um, I'm not gonna Google it either. This video's already getting long enough. Okay, turn off speaker on remote disconnect. Remember, I was telling you in a previous video that when it uh, hangs up, you can you're hearing that busy sound. Well, this is this actually does that. I'm gonna go ahead and set that, and I'm gonna try that real quick. Reboot the phone. Okay, let me place a call. Yep, that did it. Oh, I didn't capture the trace. Oh well. Yeah, so it's basically the same as this last last uh, slip call. I didn't capture it, but basically what happens is, is phone A calls phone B, okay, and so then it answers, gives a 200 okay, and we got an act, and then phone, oh, well, this is phone A in this in this case, but what's what I've noticed is when phone B hangs up, phone A just sits there and, and, and gives a busy signal, and, uh, and that is a goofy, goofy 
uh, grand stream thing. I, 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 I don't get it. I, that is not a sip foam thing. That <laughs> I've never seen another sip foam besides grand stream do that. And you gotta turn, I don't get it. Turn off speaker on remote disconnect. But if you don't turn, and it's, it's no by default. I don't know why it's not. Yeah, so when the other end hangs up, it's, it's done, the call's done. Don't sit there and give a, a busy signal. Anyway, I'm done ranting about that little, this is, this is a grand stream feature here, so. Uh, I have some Polycom phones I don't have that problem with. This is, this right here is goofy. Hopefully they took them out of their new ones, or their new phones. Okay, so check SIP user ID for incoming invite. Check it against what? I don't know what that is. And that's, that's probably another grand stream thing. Let's see, refer to, use target contact. I think this is if you're doing a, a refer me, uh, message. This is if you're doing a uh, refer header in your, like a call transfer. And we'll have to get into that. That's, <laughs> that, that can be pretty complicated. I'm not gonna get in now. But anyway, that's, it's just saying uh, use target contact. Um, I'm not exactly what that's for. We'd have to play with it a little bit on a call transfer. We do some call tran. Actually, when we get a, a PBX or a proxy or back-to-back -back user agent, we're going to uh, we'll have a lot more fun with some of these these other settings, um, and then we can really start digging into the <laughs> details. We're, we're just scratching the surface of SIP right now. Believe it or not. Okay, <laughs> disable multiple media attribute in STP. Yeah, and that's um, the original SIP. I don't know. Let's let's do this. I I don't really remember, so I'm going to uh, let's update. Let's check this, update it. We'll just place a SIP call and take a look at it. How's that sound? Okay, I went ahead and rebooted the phone and placed the call. I don't want to make this video any longer than it is. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's look in this, this message, this SDP. And yeah, it looks exactly the same. Uh, disable multimedia. So what I was gonna say er earlier, and uh, don't hold me to this, but originally SIP was for a lot of different things besides just uh, <laughs> placing telephone calls uh, and video phone calls, but uh, yeah, so it, it could do other types of media. And and I believe that's a, that multimedia attribute is a, a header uh, defining what kind of media it is. And uh, I don't even see it in the in the SDP here. So, uh, but I think it's like MM or so. I, I'd have to Google it. I'm not gonna mess with it because I, I don't use it. So um, if you're interested, you can go check it out. Anyway, let's move on. We're almost done here. Um, okay, so preferred uh, <laughs> vocoder. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't even know if that's a word. I'd have to Google that. Um, anyway, these are voice codecs. So right now it's saying, well, we prefer uh, G711, which is uh, PCM MULA. Uh, the second one is PCM ALAW, which is kind of a European thing. And then we got 723, 729AB, 726, LBC, 722, and GSM. And I guess it defaults all this junk, because <laughs> I didn't set it. I usually use 722 and uh, PCM, and, uh, and that's about it. And uh, the 729, a lot of people use that if they're running out of bandwidth, but that doesn't seem to be much of a problem nowadays with uh, uh, such big pipes, but if you, uh, if you had an office that only had a couple DS0, <laughs> uh, on your, couple DS0s on your PBX, then uh, yeah, this is, this is probably <laughs> a better choice. Okay, SRTP is um, a secure RTP, which is kind of like TLS type thing. And uh, this event list BLF URI, I'm, uh, I, well, I know what URI is. That's like a web address, but uh, this is the busy lamp field. And well, no, it's a if busy lamp field means that you're on the phone. So I guess if you're on the phone, you can, 
post it to whatever this URI is, and, and that notifies other people you're on the phone, right? And, uh, and I have no idea what this special feature is. <laughs> oh, I guess if you have Nortel, Broadsoft, Huawei, Philips, wow. And uh, that's it. So the account two and account is basically the exact same setup as account one, except for what I showed you about the port numbers and, and the names and, and the user IDs, which are the telephone numbers. And then you got account three, account four, and these extensions right here are, are for these uh, soft keys that you can program. And, and it looks like you can add just boatloads of them. And so this is like if you have an extension module, like uh, I Googled it real quick. I couldn't remember the name of it. But uh, <laughs> look at that beast. <laughs> look at all those extensions. Um, how'd you like keep track of that? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyway, that's that's kind of what that's for. All right, and it's got, hey, look at them. There's 56 on that page, and and here's the other one. Another, uh, oh, I guess there's 112 of them all together, so. Anyway, that, my friends, is it. If you have any, uh, <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments under the video. I'll try to answer them the best I can. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. That really helps. And, um, and hit the subscribe button. That really helps uh, as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. And uh, I'll see you next time.